Illinois head man still sporting the beard. Now at the mic as we head back to the site. Big Ten Football Media Days. I'm a privilege to uh, represent our flagship university, University of Illinois, here today. It's also an honor and privilege for uh, the three players that we brought up representing our team. Uh, Nick Algretti, offensive lineman, Mike Dudick, a wide receiver, and Jamal Milan, a defensive lineman. All three of those players played their high school football right here in the Chicago area. So this is pretty uh, big for them. Year three uh, over the, of the overhaul for us is, is underway. Uh, when we initially got here, uh, we kind of established some things that we needed to take care of. Uh, one being uh, facilities. Uh, we're really excited about our state-of-the-art facility that we'll be moving into this time next year. Should really get us up to par with the rest of the teams and uh, really kind of go past them. So this exciting time. Uh, something that our current players need and deserve and also should give us a boost with recruiting uh, as guys come on our campus down in Champaign. A lot of exciting things, of course, are happening as we talk about year three of the rebuild. When you, uh, when you start 15 true freshmen and one uh, redshirt freshman, it kind of tells you a little bit where you are and what you're doing with your program. And that's where we are. Those players got a lot of valuable experience last year. Uh, we've seen them get bigger, stronger, fast off of the field, and just their football knowledge has grown quite a bit. So we really like that. And we'll, year three will produce results uh, from some of the things that we've done with it. Also excited about some new additions to our staff. Rod Smith on the offensive side coordinating our offense along with uh, Corey Patterson, high school coach from uh, the St. Louis area. And on the defensive side, Austin Clark needed a, you know, we lost a good defensive line coach and needed one to come in and didn't really know an awful lot about him until I started talking with him and uh, knew early on that he was a guy that I wanted on the staff. And Gil Bird, a guy that I have a long history with. You know, as a man, one of the best men I've met in my life and uh, he'll do a great job coordinating the passing part of our defense along with coaching our safeties. So we're excited about that. Uh, we realize we haven't won enough football games, uh, but they come if you continue to do the right things. We've changed the culture of our program. Uh, we know uh, the look that we would like to have on the football field. And again, we're anxious to uh, get to year three. We're excited about our schedule too. Uh, when you only leave the state, of Illinois, I think one time until late October, uh, you have to be excited about that. We need to get off to a good start. Uh, excited by playing Friday night game, um, you know, open Big Ten play. So there's a lot of good things going on down in Champaign. And for us, uh, just getting to training camp, we have some training camp, legitimate training camp battles, uh, starting with who will be our quarterback. And so that'll be a great competition with, uh, of course, Cam Thomas, who finished up in that role, uh, along with uh, incoming guys, whether it be a graduate transfer quarterback or an incoming freshman. I'll take your questions. Coach, we'll take our first question right here on our right in the middle of the room. Jeremy Warner, 24-7 Sports. Well, you, you played all these freshmen last year. Now there's a new rule with the redshirt rule. Uh, I'm wondering how that maybe would have changed things last year or how you'll approach with the uh, four games and then you can keep them redshirted. Well, last year I don't think it would have changed much. We felt like we needed to uh, play those freshmen that gave us the best chance to win. So it was kind of as simple as that. Uh, how I look at the rule, how we look at the rule going forward, I think it's a good thing. Uh, even though we played a lot of young guys last year, the odds are we're going to play some more this year. But to have options, uh, if we need, feel like that those are the best guys that we have early on, we will play them. But have that option of, of going through a season and knowing for sure what you have in some of the freshmen if it, if it be later in the year. This past year, you know, maybe the, the two highest uh, recruited 
uh, rated players that we recruited this past year, Kendrick Green and Larry Oladipo, we didn't actually get them on the football field. So to be able to have a chance to see all the refreshment is pretty important. Coach, you move all the way to the far left of the room. Yes. Love you, Josh Helmholt, Rivals.com. You mentioned the three guys you have here today, all Chicagoland natives. How has or how is Chicago uh, factor into your recruiting game plan now, and how has that evolved since your first class you recruited to Champaign? Well, with our uh, with our first class, of course, as you identify the recruiting areas that we need to be strong in, of course, Chicago is right at the top of that. We will put a lot of time and effort into trying to keep our best players in the state, of course, the guys from Chicago. How that has changed, that's still the case right now. Of course, other schools know what type of talent we have in our high school programs, and that's a chore. We've lost a few guys here in our state, but the but University of Illinois uh, is the right place for a lot of people. We'll get our share. And in time, we need to be able to keep the guys in our state here as much as anything. But again, we recognize what's up here, and we'll continue to recruit it hard. Coach, we'll shift back over to our right, down front here with Shannon. <coughs> Shannon Ryan, Chicago Tribune. Um, you said year three will produce results. How much higher should the bar be for your program? What are you expecting? Well, you know, we, I don't think you should ever say this is how many wins we have to have or we're going to get. But uh, for us, when we say improvement, when you talk about the young players first time on the field, I just know behind the scenes they've gotten so much better. And you look at what happened during the course of the year. There were about three games where really we didn't have a chance to win last year. The rest of the time, we played competitive ball. So this year, taking another step. As I talk about our home schedule, we have great fans. And they've been loyal fans uh, through some tough times. But, you know, getting out of the gate early on, getting momentum. And then we'll see. I just know that we're a better football team right now. And normally with my history, it's said that that shows results during the course of the year. Coach, we'll go back to the left side of the room, second row. Jim Cotter, Danville Commercial News. Levy, uh, Mike Dudek got back on the field last year after back-to-back -back ACL injuries. What do you expect from Dudek this year, and uh, how is he uh, leading your receiving core? It, uh, it was good to get Mike back on the field last year. He wasn't you know, completely healthy, and he didn't finish the season healthy, but he is now. Uh, and it's been a while, but Mike Dudek is an excellent football player. And uh, as we talk about all the young players we have on our roster, uh, we do have guys like Mike, like Nick, like Jamal that have played a lot of football, and uh, we need them to be who they, they should be. And that's what we've seen. Mike's had an excellent offseason. He's completely healthy now. Uh, in our, uh, our new offense that we'll be running, he'll have an opportunity to be the featured guy and be able to, we should see a lot of production from him. Uh, again, he's in excellent shape and he's going to have an outstanding year. Coach back on the right side of the room, third row. Eric Fisher from SB Nation. With uh, Def on the offensive line being a, a concern heading into this season, how, how important was it for these now sophomore offensive linemen to get experience on the field last year? And what, uh, what steps do they need to take just to improve upon this year? I think first off, just experience. There's no, I know it's coast talk, but there is no substitute for it. So for those guys to uh, get a lot, I'm talking about Bobby Roundtree, Jamal Woods, Isaiah Gay, uh, those players got a, a lot of time uh, that has to help you an awful lot uh, But we will be in that situation. Those guys are older uh, But we depth is a problem a little bit, but there's good young depth coming uh, You know, I mentioned some of the guys like you know Larry Oladipo another guy from the Chicago area It's a good football player So I know these young guys uh, can play and that experience will, will, will come uh, again, Coach Austin Clark does a good job. He's an excellent teacher, and that's exactly what our players need right now. But uh, we, we like the position we in defensively with those guys stepping up. Another player I should mention, too, that uh, went down with a serious knee injury in training camp last year, Jake Hansen. We're really excited about what he'll bring to our defense, too. He's healthy, and he should have an outstanding year. 
Coach, next question is all the way in the back of the room, up on the TV platform on our left. Uh, Nico Hefflinger, Fox Champagne Sports. Uh, spring ball really just had Cam Thomas taking reps at quarterback. What's it going to be like heading into the, the fall camp uh, with the rest of the quarterbacks on campus? Well, uh, going back to spring practice, we had really one scholarship quarterback that went through spring practice with us. So Cam got a lot of reps, which he needed. And course wanted and we saw a lot of progress with him. He also knew that come uh, training camp uh, there would be more competition uh, coming on campus but when you're a competitor you want that. You want to prove to the rest of the team that I'm the guy. So as I mentioned it's legitimate quarterback competition we have in training camp. We as coaches will put the guys in position and let it play out and the guy that we end up with will feel real good about. Cam brings an awful lot. He, you know, I uh, described him as a developmental passer, but he has a strong arm. And, of course, he did a lot of things with his feet last year. But we've seen him, st just like we talked about with the rest of the freshmen, he's grown an awful lot in this year. Coach, your next question is the same side of the room toward the back on the aisle. Madeline yes. Kenny with the Chicago Sun-Times. Record aside, is this kind of how you expected or envisioned, envisioned year three of the program overhaul, as you called it, would be like? Thanks for saying record aside. It's a lot easier to answer it now. Um, yes, you know, as we came into our program, we evaluated it. Uh, we thought, of course, we needed to do a lot better job. We as a coaching staff needed to do a good job. But uh, we needed to upgrade the, the talent level. Uh, we're doing that. Uh, considering where we are, the facilities we have right now, people kind of see what's coming, you know with the facilities and everything else. So uh, in an ideal world, we wanted to have more wins right now, but uh, I like where we are. And now that that's behind us, I like how we're sitting year three. And this is when we expect to see results. All right, thank you very much, Coach. That's all the time we have. Thank you.